Let's get into this next match. Here we go. Shogun and Lawler have the commentary. Well, it is going to be our Proving Grounds match of the day. XL versus Galeforce Esports. Galeforce looking to bounce back after what they believe to be a disappointing week number one, whilst XL didn't have the best performances last season when they were going under the name of Cow Nose. Coming in this season, replacing Dan Sizzle with Pondex. Will that be the difference maker? Will they step up? He has been the difference maker. I mean, you already look at the way that they're handling their play-ins. 3-0 in a dominating fashion over Aeriality to make it in. And uh, as well as, uh, I think it was Method was the team that they beat to completely make it in through the upper bracket. So a team that is very, very strong that had a lot of issues with offense, but that's what Pondex really brings to this team. A lot of pressure on that offensive side. It's definitely structured like we see a lot of North American teams put together. One player at the back, two players forward. Zenzis will be the backbone of this XL team, but we will not keep you waiting. It is time to get into our second game of European Sunday. It's Pondex automatically trying to get the setup for Zenzis, and you can already see in that back line will be the man tasked with not making mistakes like that. You want to talk about a quick counterattack. One, two, and immediately down the pitch. Violent Panda being that VIP, a pass over to the side, but a crucial mistake back to himself for the goal. Gale Force will be happy to see that go in. 15 seconds into this matchup. Both these teams want to try and make the statement in our opening game. Another long ball is going to be played. This time, Zenzis can't deal with it yet again. He rotated too far into the middle, did not hold that backboard. No, he was talking exactly that. Obviously, no corner boost either. He has zero boost on this jump. Oh, he he's jumped just early. To, yeah, he's trying to make it back to the middle as quick as possible because he used his 10, 12 boost to get there. And because of that, over-rotated, then just the placement. Nothing you can do about it. Those sort of shots you always want to be at the back post that you've got the most range of motion available to you. Zenzis this time pushing it into the corner, picking up his first save. Gale Force Esports find themselves two goals to the better, almost. <laughs> put down to one goal, but a lovely save there from Violent Panda. Will prevent that from being the case. Still possible with another long ball. Very few boosts, but he just wants to get the block. He's managed to set this up for Kadop, who can now put some pressure on. Zenzus with the ball yet again, plays that over to the middle. It's basically a pass straight over to Telepulsa, who can try and follow. That was going to be very difficult to read, though. Couldn't quite do it. And after a tumultuous start, XL seemed to be settling in. We've just gone past the one minute mark. One minute in, obviously, as you just stated, but that's where Gale Force is extremely dangerous. Quick starts, quick counterattacks. They know how to punish you for those subtle mistakes. He's there to see two on the board for them. Let me drop down. Opportunity for a setup, but those saves are usually pretty simple for defenders. And just run onto it. Niels Cook. Gonna go for the shot, and this is the reason why he had such a strong shooting series last season. Kadop played it right, right into the corner, gets demoed on his way out, but still two defenders. Niels Cook has no problem, a quick pop up to himself, and then taking that near post. He's not able to get to it in time. That guy you said, usually the person on the near post challenges first, back post then comes in afterwards. But it doesn't matter if they don't expect to be beaten in the first place. Well played by Niels Cook, putting them back within one after a matter of seconds. Niels Cook, 0.9 goals per game last season. And if Excel are going to have a strong season this time around, they are going to need him to replicate that performance throughout the entirety of this season at number four. Another long ball going to be played. That's going to be bouncing off the sidewall. Kadok can take control. Big demo though by Pondex. Leaves the goal open, and we are all tied up. Yet again, another quick attack coming out from this team of Excel. Okay, I'm just trying to push it past, but the pinch going in favor of Niels. Not only that, but it pinches perfectly back into the middle of the field, positioning on point for Zensis. So a two-goal lead dropped. We have got over three minutes left in our first game. Plenty left to play. Another long ball. Seems to be both teams happy to try and see if any mistakes will be made. And Niels Kirk going to come in for a second. You know, they talked on the desk about a little bit looking of shakiness from this Gale Force team, and you see it there. Usually clears, I mean, Turbo Pulse had the right idea playing that out to the side, just trying to buy his team a little bit of time, but for Violent Panda to miss that touch upfield, it would have been a beautiful clear with two up. They would have had a two-on-one advantage. And now Excel have got a trio of goals unanswered by Gale Force, whose goals at the beginning of the game did come from mistakes. 
that he did take advantage of, so we do need to see them picking it up just a little bit here. Still more than half this game left to play. We played straight to the corner by Niels Cook. Another long ball from K-Op, just wanting to keep it away from his half for the time being as Galefosh tried to rebuild after a poor previous minute. Violent Panda wanted to try and drop it down, but instead misses it, and Honex with the save. Now XL have their opportunity to try and move forward. Will we beat to that? And Toa Pulsar actually gets beat in the block, and K-Dop forced yet again to play into the corner. Violent Panda is going to be second best of Honex, who seems to be fulfilling his role pretty well. Just going to be a nuisance in that midfield and offensive area. Already succeeding once with that big demo. That really did start off XL's comeback in this game. Final minute and 45. Time is starting to tick away. Gale Force need to find something. Podex, lovely doink from him. But KDOT will not have to be troubled too much by that. Pass straight to the middle. And there is going to be Podex yet again picking up his first goal of the season. Not even creative, just very conventional play. Pinch or a pass out from the corner of the side, right back in the middle, and they've connected on that. But four unanswered goals for this XL team, and they are running away with it. Just over 90 seconds remaining. And XL on form. Ever since that really poor opening 30 seconds. Um, just looked like a completely different team. The nerves seem to have dissipated. Violent Panda wanted to try and take that over the top of Niels Cook. Telepos has the opportunity to move forward, but Niels Cook yet again gets in the way. Not allowing any danger to come to his team. We're interested to see how XL deal with being in two goals in the lead now. Are they going to try and pressure their opposing team, or are they going to turtle up? Well, if they give up this pressure, I think it puts all the favor back in Gale Force. The big difference in this game is XL has definitely been leading the charge. They're not afraid to come and contest. Or be the first ones to the ball for that matter, and it's paying off. So for them to kind of turtle and play a little bit more passive, not the route to go in my opinion. Another long ball. We played off the backboard, but there's going to be Niels Cook. Plays off the backboard yet again. Zentus will not go for it because Niels Cook can get himself a double touch. Things like that will just waste more time heading to the final 30 seconds. Kadon cannot get there. Pondex puts him off, and Niels Cook, long ball from him off that backboard. Here comes Zentus. Side jump from him, wants to recover nice and early. 20 seconds now, Gale Force need something, and they need it within the next five seconds if they want to give themselves any time to pick up yet another goal. Violent Panda just taps that straight over to Niels Kirk, and with that, it should be, it might be Termoposa. One goal game, four seconds remaining. Can they do it? It's gotta be difficult, but there is still a chance Gale Force has shown they can make these quick transitions, but it was a matter of finally getting someone being forced. You could tell for Excel, they just wanted to clear the ball out. Oh, that loss is actually going to make it very difficult, but Gale Force have managed to force the block. Ponex puts that one straight down. And a scary final 10 seconds for Excel, but they do pull out the win. That was an up and down game for both squads there. I think they'll both want to be improving upon this, especially as we can move forward. Excel realized that opening minute was very poor. Gale Force realized that the next two minutes were very poor. Want to see more from them as we go into game number two. Yeah, a lot of it did have to do with that pressure coming out early for Gale Force. Kind of caught this team of Excel off guard of like, okay, they do play really fast. We got we to gotta adapt to this. And for them to take that consideration of being down two right away is very difficult to overcome. Usually you see those games are the blowout ones because they're kind of going for those feelers and they just let it happen just to see what they need to adapt to. But they didn't. They came back, they attacked quickly, and they kept it textbook play. Nothing too creative, nothing too crazy. Just make a pass inside, put it on net. And they did it, and it worked off. So that pressure coming out from Excel was able to handle a Gale Force, and now Gale Force is going to have to bounce back, which isn't something that we're used to saying, even though they're second place curse kind of situation. Yes. Uh, they finally broke it with two players, but three, we haven't seen them play well since their, uh, their couple victories that we saw uh, in the offseason. Yep, we definitely need both squads to really tighten up that defense point at this point of time. A Rocket League rarity in this match. Every single player on the pitch picking themselves up a goal. Niels Cook coming in with two goals to himself. And it was that brace that really was the difference maker. Can XL now repeat what they performed in that previous game and take a second win 
over tournament favourites Gale Force Esports or will GFE finally start to perform to the expectations set for them? Well, most of these players do have quite a bit of history. They did touch on it a little bit ago with Cow Nose for most of these players, but Codex has seen pretty much a lot of the same team, but is finally able to make an impact the past couple of seasons as he missed out quite a bit with Penna. Gale Force had an opportunity to start off this game. Couldn't quite find the positioning to turn it into the net. Silent Panda beat to the ball. Niels Cook goes for the aerial. Negative angle shot, forcing the save from Turbo Pulse. Uh, XL going to look to put that pressure on. GSP will be happy to see the miss coming out. Possibility, but big demo will prevent the shot. Gale Force, you can already see the changes happening. All three players stacked in that box and back. You see it there again. They're not giving up these freebies anymore. They want to make sure it's covered. Opportunity now for Gale Force to start moving forward, but they did send two players. Going to struggle to set this rotation up. Going to struggle even more now that k has been removed from the field. Spinal Panda gets the shot. It's going to be a weak one and can be pushed into the corner by Zenzus. He's looked a lot more comfortable ever since those that opening game. A couple of mistakes. Seems like he's now more involved in the rotation and not holding back, and I do believe that that's going to help him out so much. We are starting to see Violent Panda as well play a bit more aggressive because of his boost control. He's usually always a little bit more passive, just trying to be there to set things up. But in this season alone, we've seen him take more of an offensive role. He's not afraid to go for those touches or those quick, quick shots. We saw them get their first couple goals with his individual pass that he capitalized off of the mistake from the defense. Oh, Kato! Oh, Able finding to, the corner. Able to sneak one in that bottom right, just catching this team off guard. Violent Panda forcing that 50-50 into the corner. Get up, reads it well, stays patient, doesn't force himself up on the wall, waits for it to settle as two are rotating out for Excel. He just puts a good shot on the wall, but a completely different story in game number two here. We saw a lot of uh, collateral happen in the first minute or so, but taking two minutes to get the first goal on the board. Violent Panda gonna put another shot forward. It's Turbo Pulsar wanted to just get the redirect. Pull it away from the defender. Caleb will happily take that ball back and pass straight into him. You have to be very, very careful when you're controlling that ball in the corner, not to put it straight into the path of an opponent. Zenzus flicks that one on. Is anyone back in net? No, they are not. And Excel have tied up. Now, despite the spacing being pretty solid from Gale Force, you see a double commit. Violent Panda making a huge mistake there. He needs to get back rather than forcing another challenge. Needs to rely on his teammates on defense that are going to challenge in for him. They have the better angle anyway. In the circumstance that they do get beaten out, leaves a wide open net. We're all tied up. So Gale Force, once again giving up a lead. Struggled to convert in that previous game. Now they haven't converted so far in this one. Ponex leaving that for a long period of time. That's going to be a difficult touch for him. Him and Zenzus both up for that ball. Double commit, I do agree with though. Putting more bodies in the way. Turbo Pulsa didn't have much room to run onto that shot. But Gale Force putting long periods of time on the offensive end. Need to create a goal out of it though. Spinal Panda getting it off that backboard. Pondex can deal, but he didn't get great contact. Gonna allow GFE to put them in together, but two players making contact with that ball can send it all the way back down to Gale Force's end. And Excel can try and put something together. Pwned will be beat. Violent Panda up in the air. He's going to recover in time. Takes the ball down. Niels Cook is behind him. Will it be enough? No, Zenzus gets there in time. But Kadok is around. Contact will not be great. Niels Cook will put that one straight back over. Almost a zigzag passing play coming out from Gale Force Esports. Well, trying to find something. Well read by Excel, though. Staying patient on that defensive side. Fighting off that challenge. But they do need to be careful. You see all three of them almost like synchronized swimmers as you're going to see Kadop sneak one in over the top. You have to be so careful about those midfield passes. Violent Panda sees it. He understands that Pondex is trying to rotate back. Pond does not have a choice. He can't turn around and challenge. It's not going to happen. He's not going to win it. Unfortunately, going back to the net is also not the correct decision. A lose-lose situation for Pondex and Gale Force back in the lead and for them they'll hope that this time they can hold on to it Violent Panda with a miss and Niels Cook 
Pushes it straight out. Turbo Pulse will happily move on, but he does take his time a little bit too much. Zenzus clears straight into the Gale Force half. Nice challenge there from Pwn, but Chaos controls the ball still. Something that every single player on Gale Force is so good at is recovery. See another showcase over there. Violent Panda deciding using the backside of his car, but still does a half flip out. I'm sure he's facing the right way, but he's in a dangerous spot in a 1v2. Two challenges, he beats it out, buys time for his team. 30 seconds left in game number two. Excel, you're going to have to stop moving forward now. Zensis and Nilsko basically stood still. Will allow Kadok to keep moving into their end. They have to keep the rotation at speed, otherwise they will be beat. Nice attempt at passing play towards the middle, but the demo and the interception will prevent it. It's Excel now going to prod away at this defense for the final 10 seconds. Gale Force will look for a big clear if they can. It's going to be an opportunity shot onto the side. And Violet Panda will just let it drop. We are all tied up 1-1 in this series. Need to be careful, though. You saw Violent Panda. Violent Panda. It's Pandarin. He was waiting for the Pele to happen. But Kadop came in and swooped in from that, uh, that first initial touch. He moved in and actually cut somebody off. And because of that, it actually allowed this Excel team to continue that pressure towards the end. They need to be careful because a lot of the time and a lot of the mistakes coming from Gale Force are because they're not trusting that last man on defense. They just need to go back to the basics. Person rotating in takes the far post, person at the near post challenges, and just keep that cycle going because they are cutting each other off and it's creating some mistakes. They got away with that one there. Yeah, and I'm a little bit scared right now about every single time Gale Force is controlling the ball, pulling it down for a dribble. Players on an XL are stopping and waiting for the yep. ball to hit that halfway line. There is no problem with sending that first player forward, causing the move, and then using the second player to try and clean up, but they haven't tried to do that so far. And I feel like that's going to give up more and more space and offer opportunities for more passing plays for Gale Force, especially when they can drag that ball into the middle and flick over to the left or right. I mean, that's one of the benefits when you have a players like Turbo Pulsa and Kate up on your team. The individual play styles of those two, just to bring it into the middle of the field and create opportunities for whoever on their team is, is unbelievable. Something that Excel can do to counter that is just like you said, bring someone to challenge them. Even if it forces them and they dribble past you, at least your teammate has a clear, direct, telegraphed way to say, okay, he's going to the wall, I can challenge that. So it's something that they can take to their advantage and find a way to force this Gale Force into a situation that we haven't seen just yet. They have been sitting back on defense, and I mentioned them kind of looking like synchronized swimmers. All three of them are finding and following the same kind of motion rather than just allowing one player to commit and then them follow up afterwards in a reactionary kind of stuff. Well, let's get ourselves into game number three. All tied up here. In a crucial game for both squads and Excel, trying to prove that they are not the seventh best team in the region. Gale Force trying to prove that 1-1 was not representative of their skill last week. But this will be the game to do it. Whoever wins this will go on to match point. Final Panda puts the shot, but Pondex We'll be able to deal with that, and I'm a little bit worried about the fact that Zensis did try and go for the save as well. They shouldn't have been sending two. The shot was not that fast. Not only that, was he, was rotating, he was rotating back towards the net as well. Just a difficult challenge he shouldn't be going for altogether. Both, team, both teams on this pitch have been causing some big defensive mistakes that can be easily cleaned up. But obviously a lot of pressure on the line. Europe, a region where we're expecting losses on pretty much every single team. It's just who you get those losses to will be the difference maker between automatic qualification at the end of the season to the World Championships and being forced to go into the playoffs. And like teams like Method will tell you, that is not a situation you will want to be in. To avoid it is something you want to do at all costs. Get up, taking his time. Gets demo for it. <laughs> Zenzo's going to move forward. That is going to be a difficult touch for his team to follow on to. Niels Cook holding that halfway line. Excel will now try and control those two middle boost birds. Plays like this from Kadop, just freeing up so much space for the rest of his team, not allowing the siege to begin for Excel. Exactly like we're talking about, though. That challenge forced Kadop to flip it into the middle of the field. That should be telegraphed. There should be someone on Excel able to go. Oh, that's a big that. mistake, and Kadop couldn't turn it into net. It will be followed up by Violent Panda, but a huge whiff. Big mistake coming out here there from Niels Cook. Leaves it wide open for Kadop, but good for him. I don't know if that was just a missed shot or otherwise, but the ability to play it off that backboard did draw that last defender and left it wide open for Violent Panda. 
Doesn't matter, it did work. Spider Panda with the flick. 1 0. Gale Force finds himself in the lead, gets himself an extra touch. A little bit more contact, he could have had a shot on that. Every single player on XL recognizing how to defend against those air dribbles. Something that Bluey very good at punishing teams for whenever they've got too many players forward. Because you can't challenge an air dribble going back towards your own net. No, bad things happen when you do. Just something about your car moving with the ball in a challenge kills the ball right in front of your own net. Not a very fun situation to be a part of. Turbo getting it into the corner. XL not choosing to pressure the corner. Instead, they want to hold that midfield line. Two players committed, but they did get a strong enough block and going to allow Niels Cook to go for the shot. Good patience by Turbo Pulse there. He could have went up for challenge that, but the 50-50 would not have gone in his favor. So he does back off, plays it to the side, and just that little bit extra time now allows Gale Force to transition back. Sends us using that corner of the wall. Trying to find a new angle to keep his team away from the defensive end. So we start to head into the final two minutes. XL still trailing by one goal. In a crucial game three. Those corners are going to be very difficult to set anything up from, but Pondex is going to get it off the backboard. There will be a follow-up, but it is actually Violet Panda who wins the ball outright, goes coast to coast, and the lead is now doubled. A long play, all because three of them there. Zensis needs to rotate back. He's that third man. He needs to go back and trust the player who's at the top of the pitch to make that play. He's sitting there waiting for it, and because he jumps across, that last player can't do anything. He just sits there and goes, okay, what happens? I have to trust my teammate, and it all falls apart. If you're going to make that kind of commit, you have to make it count. The miss originally from Pondex allowed Zensis to move himself forward. Now Turbo Pulse can go for the 1v1 play, hits the crossbar, and Pondex gets it into the other side of the field. XL need to find something, but Gale Force finding those wheels, getting themselves looking stronger and stronger with every passing moment in this game. And XL have got to find themselves a new gear, otherwise they might get drowned out. That'll do it right there. Just the pressure again from Gale Force overwhelming this team. You just see it from simple mechanics. Violent Panda, one of the better ones to challenge the ball, gets up way before this team of XL just allows the ability for Turbo Pulsa to capitalize off of it. Up 3-0, a totally different scoreline in this game compared to the first two. Gale Force will be happy to record themselves a clean sheet if they can keep this game at zero. Something that they have struggled with, especially last week. Nails Cook looking for a long ball. Pondex does not get the contact he wanted. Instead killing the ball outright and Zenzus Looks like it's just struggling right now for XL. I don't know if it's him like struggling to rotate in, if he's getting called off balls, but something needs to work out, and Zentis is always in the middle of those missed rotations. Could just be a lack of confidence, trying to force something to happen. You see it there. Even if he does get the contest, it's probably only going to be pinched straight down into his own net. But it's allowing this Gale Force team to shadow and read this all the way back. You talk about Having to make touches when you're retreating towards your own net and you have players watching you do it. Difficult no matter what happens because they can challenge it immediately. But Excel does a good job handling it there as that ball is going to pinch over to the side in favor of Bondex. Does take control of the ball. At this point in time, Excel just looking for a consolation goal, but Pondex unable to control the ball at all. Excel all over the place, but that is a beautiful doink. Looking for the assist, but Zenzus goes for the volleyball set to nobody, and Gale Force take their second game, series point for them, and a much better performance. They take the clean sweep. A dominant performance by them for sure, and a lot of it did have to do with that player in the middle for Excel on the scoreboard. Zens is just making crucial mistakes, and it just seems like he's lost. He doesn't know where he's supposed to be at the moment, and there's kind of a, a like a quiet rule about Rocket League. When in doubt, just go back to the net. If something's going wrong, just go to net because you need to save something or you need to just create space for your teammates to make up for it. And he's not doing that. He's forcing it by 
pro, uh, like he's jumping back towards his own side, cutting across, he's cutting off his own teammates, and it's creating domino effects that are making mistakes for this team that could be easily avoided. We saw it primarily with that long shot from Violent Panda that snuck in. There was a player who was sitting at the midfield, just sitting there waiting for it, and he would have been able to apply that pressure. If Zensus goes and gets boost, that play probably gets popped up high, and guess who's then waiting for it to continue that pressure again? Yeah. It's just these subtle mistakes are making huge differences in this game, and Guildforce is just playing really solid. They're just not really forcing anything. They're just keeping it cool and capitalizing on the mistakes that the other team is making for them. Yeah, but I should correct myself very quickly. Clean sheet, not clean sweep. Two very, very different true. things. Very true. <laughs> Excel is still in this. They yeah. need to try and show it now in game number four. I do want to speak to you right now about the introduction of Pondex because we've seen Niels the consensus. They've stuck together for a long time. Last season with Dan's Hizzle, didn't get the results they wanted. They finished last. Over the preseason, they played in the GFN Elite Series with Lunation, who was drafted onto the squad. They finished last. And with shots like that from Turbo Pulsar, we don't want to see a repeat from XL. No, just Telegraph clears as well. You saw Pondex up on that wall trying to clear it out. Turbo's just sitting there waiting. He's like, you have literally nowhere to go. The way your car is facing, you're projecting that's going to go into the wall. So I'm just going to sit and wait. That immediately count, immediately countered. It doesn't matter if there's people back on defense. Eventually, that pressure is going to get to you. Gale Force just starting to suffocate this team as they get that confidence back. Excel looking for their way in. Zenzus pushes it to the side, but there will be no rotation from Pondex. He wants to hold that midfield line. Okay, that wants to try and clear. Over to Niels Cook, though. Excel will want to try and answer this opening goal as quickly as possible. They could not afford another game where it will be business as usual. That's going to be an opportunity. Zenzus puts that into the side. Lovely placement on the shot, taking it away from an incoming KO. Much better job. You saw Turbo actually rotating and had a flick to clear that out, but Pondex read it beautifully. Shut it down right back towards the net, and they all tie it up. Only 40 seconds into this match, and it's going to be yet another nail-biter, I presume. Exactly what XL need, though. Shutting down that opening lead within the minute. Not allowing Gale Force to get comfortable like they did in the previous matchup. Zenzus looks for that lock. Turbo Pulsar controlling the midfield, though. Gale's Cook once again using those walls. An area that Excel have done very well from so far in this series. Kate up off the backboard. It's only straight up to Niels Cook, who can try and go for the passing play. Up to Zenzus. Lovely one, two. Fantastic confusion by Excel. They're taking full advantage of their situation. You see Zetsus coming across, just trying to force something off of that play. Turbo Pulse is in a terrible situation. Do I go for the contest? What happens? He decides to play unselfish, gives it to the teammate, and then Niels Cook can go for the demo. Really well played by Excel. I love that from Turbo. He just understands it's either a 1v1 against Niels Cook or it's a pass over to Zetsus. Just goes, I'm just going to jump <laughs> and I'll see what works. Put a body of the way to the most simplistic sense. Full done by Turbo, obviously not panning out for him. I like the idea though, do a thing. <laughs> it's a good rule in Rocket League. If you're not doing the thing, do the thing. Zentus will take too much time and Turbo Pulsar clatters into him by doing the thing. The demo fang. <laughs> Excel will have their opportunity to now go and mount their own pressure. Two goals to one up, looking to try and force game five. And it's not been their offense that has been lacking so far this series. That could be an unconventional goal to say the very least, but Kadop holding himself on that goal line. Kadop finding himself at the back line quite a lot so far this series. Turbo Pulse is going to try and go for the double tap. Gets one, gets two, and it's going to be a setup. Two players committed, offering Niels Cook the ball now, who just has to find the net. It is an open goal, and Pondex Padding those stats, and I didn't pick it for my fantasy. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, really big overcommitment here. Big mistake by Gale Force. You saw two go up for that finalized shot. Usually you want to leave that to your striker. In that case, it would have been Kadop. Had the opportunity to try to knock that one in, but sometimes the overconfidence does punish, and you see it there. Good goal secured by Pondex in the end. But Gilfors wasting no time back on offense as Violent Panda tries to put one in. Taking too much time, Kadop playing both the fake and the potential 1v1 play. Understanding his positioning very well there. 
looks to start moving himself forward. Violet Panda taking touches, and it looks like Gale Force trying to just outpace this XL defense. Trying to get there before anyone can challenge. But it's either XL are getting there for the challenge on time, or just straight up not taking the bait. But of the and K-Dop taking control of the ball, fight, heading into the final two minutes. Two goal lead still for XL. They would love to put another one past, but now K-Dop got to pass one player, but there it is. That's exactly what I meant earlier on. Do something in the midfield and allow your third man to come in for the cleanup. One player, two players, but fine. Panda just going to have to watch as Turbo Pulsar misses the pass from K-Dop. Now Gale Force are going to have to start again from square one. Stuck in their own half. So has done a much better job as well adapting to this offensive Gale Force. Shutting it out. Telegraph plays coming on. The shots on net have been pretty straightforward. But you can tell as soon as this Gale Force team starts to mix it up, that pass inside to Turbo Pulse just missing out. Could have been their chance. It's going to be on the side. And there it is. Turbo Pulse. A valiant attempt to try and put it over to the side. Understood he had a player right behind him, but that would offer the fourth goal over to XL. Ponex getting the easiest goals of his life. Well, credit, in this do game. credit does go to this XL team. As Turbo was rotating back, the first player who was off field for XL on his way back actually chipped at Turbo Pulse. So he got underneath him as he was doing his jump. And because of that, it threw him off a little bit. That little bit extra time is making it so he can't get back in time. Really taking advantage of their position on the field as Excel, and it shows in the scoreboard of this match. Pretty reminiscent as well as last week as KDOP's gonna sneak this back with a do. 51 seconds remaining. Turbo Pulsar not making use of that corner. Instead, trying to cut it in as far infield as possible, causing chaos in the XL defense. And now they've started to build their way to a potential comeback, but they've got to find two more within 50 seconds. Each time XL get themselves a clear, it will waste at least another 10 seconds off the clock, especially if Gale Force struggles to control the ball like they did just there, heading into the final 30 seconds now. Passing play in the middle. Excel are affording them space. You cannot do that against Gale Force, and KDOP makes them pay. Especially from last year's MVP for EU, or last season's MVP. That extra touch could have been easily shut down, but giving KDOP time and space is so damaging. That extra pop, and then just nobody there. He's like, you know what? I'm just going to shoot it straight at net. No one's going to challenge me. And they put this back within one. 25 seconds left on the clock and game point on the line. There's going to be another shot from XL. Kadop will try and take control of the ball. It was a beautiful play from him earlier, recognizing that Zensis was backwards and faking out the original shot. Now passing to the take the shot. Zensis in the way. Turbo Posa ties it up. Three goals lead means nothing. What you want to talk about in this play is how well they work the field. Turbo showing that patience, but then the positioning on that shot was perfect. The placement to play that back across where the players are moving, absolutely perfect. 10 seconds left. Gale Force need to keep this going. XL are bleeding goals at this point in time. They might finish it in regulation. Here comes Kedop. He will be beaten to the ball by Pondex. And after a ludicrous game, we will head into overtime. A repeat of last week. You saw them have a difficulty closing out against Frontline, which they inevitably lost in the end. But not this time. Trying to end it here. They have the opportunity. To drop a free goal lead is a huge rarity in Rocket League. XL will want to avoid that at all costs. And get this overtime goal and force a Game 5. Gale Force, though, they know they've got games later on today, will want to present this, prevent this. As Kadop with a long ball. Niels Cook forced to get the save, but Gale Force going to start mounting pressure. Momentum is on their side. Turbo Force are taking out Niels Cook, but Gale Force going to take their time to set up yet another play. 45 seconds into overtime. Kadop flicks it up. It will be followed. And Excel, after previously not jumping and trying to outpace Gale Force, starting to get pulled into Gale Force's way of thinking. Getting removed from the play pretty often. Here comes Kadop off that backboard. Turbo Pulsar 
Watch his final pattern now Tom Apostle moves himself in and Gale Force Esports have made the comeback. They've made it stick and they've won the series. To give up a three goal lead in regulation and then bring it back in overtime. Gale Force showing that persistence and it all starts with that initial touch, that ball up in the air. Coming across doesn't touch it, but the positioning again from Turbo Pulsa allows them to clutch it in the end and Gale Force gets their first win of the day. That is huge. Five goals spread out between KDOP and Turbo Pulsar, leading the way. Four goals unprotected from XL. They drop the free goal lead. They lose it in overtime. And we saw Jacob tweet it out yesterday. It's, it's about how you respond to those down moments. They didn't even wait for them to lose a game to respond. They, in the same game, going down by a significant margin, come back and take the win in one of the best comebacks in RLCS history. Difficult to do, but they show why they are one of those teams that people revere as one of the best in this region, let alone the world. To come back from a deficit like that in general in the next game is something, but for them to do it in the same game before the game is even up is unbelievable for this Gale Force roster. Hands down, someone you just have to be careful of. Turbo Pulsa again coming up clutch. He showed it in the World Championships and he shows it again here in League Play. 15 shots, 33% shooting accuracy. When a team starts to feel as hot as that is, it's hard to stop them. That was Ridiculous. That was incredible. Let's go over to our boys on the desk. Axel Toss, over to you. Great match there for Gale Force. Falling in game one, but able to bring it back and win three in a row to take the series. Especially that last game four, I want to say it was a minute or so, they were able to make that comeback happen. And honestly, I feel like, especially in league play for Europe, where all these teams are so amazing, the ability to come back and just score three in a row with with what was I think what was a little bit over a minute left is just super impressive there for Gale Force, able to turn it around and convert to that victory in game four. Let's take a look at the mobile one high performance replay and get a recap of that one. In game one, Excel was looking pretty good. They had two just blatant uh, mistakes that gave Gale Force two of their three goals. And honestly, Excel would basically win that game four to one as long as they, uh, they don't make those mistakes. But then Gale Force, they started to wake up, they started to get that pass and work in. And every single game, it seemed like it was a different player making big moves. And you can just tell that slowly, slowly Excel are really starting to make that roster come together. They're starting to mash their play styles a bit more. Because again, individually, we've seen them prove themselves, but it is a team where we want to see them kind of be more cohesive as a team. And they're starting to do it, but Gale Force Esports is a team that's going to be tough to do that against. So every single game, it's so scary because Gale Force would have a player that basically did nothing, but the other two would get 100% goal participation. Uh, game two, it was K-Dop and Violent Panda. Then game three, it was Violent Panda uh, and Turbo Pulsar. Game four, it was Turbo Pulsar and K-Dop. So in all three of those, it was a different set of two making these moves. And honestly, that's what's so scary about Gale Force. They're just so good that any of these duos can just pop out of nowhere and win a game for them in a five game series. And it seemed like all three duos did that for one game each year. And for Excel, I think they should be feeling okay. They did have a lot of just like easy mistakes that could be cleaned up. And mm -hmm. I think that would made it a way tighter series here. Like it's hard to lose a three uh, goal lead. So that's gonna hurt, but they need to bounce back later on today. Yeah, it showed a lot of brightness, and honestly, there's still a decent amount of league play remaining. That was the first match for XL in league play. They are done for the day uh, at 0-1, but again, still plenty of match matches for them to come. I'm keeping an eye on, uh, you know, you guys, your conversations online here, and I'm going to take another question from the subreddit thread, actually, made by CloudFuel. Check that out. We got a question from Squirrel Dude. Thanks for your question. Whenever uh, Squirrel Dude says... When, whenever I watch Gale Force, they play like a completely different team when they are tied or have the lead in a game compared to when they are trailing. Does the desk see what I see? And if so, what are the, the differences that they're seeing? So I assume they mean just the aggressive play when they're down. It seems like Turbo Pulse is one of those players. He can play very passively when they have a lead because they don't need to do too much. And then as soon as they're down, they're like, all right, just send everyone. Mm -hmm. Send the whole team. And sometimes like that's what you have to do. And that's where you'll start seeing some bigger losses. Like against Excel, that one game where Excel scores four is because they were just trying to pressure so much. So yeah. Excel gets some free shots off. And you'll definitely, it'll feel like a larger margin when it's a team like Gale Force, who does Excel so much on offense, where when they're playing passive defense, it just doesn't seem like much is happening. And the moment they flick it on, they're like, hey, let's play offense for a second. It just, it just seems like yeah. what's going on, what's happening. And, you know, we were talking about it a bit, Alex, or just 
the pressure that you do feel as a team is like, well, we have no choice. We have to score. So it's just kind of like, you know, sheets the wind. We might as well go for it. We might as well just bring out every tool we have. And that usually when all of a sudden you're like, where'd this come from? Who's this team? The team's always there, latent, just kind of waiting for their moment to shine. It's really what it comes down to. But yeah, there's definitely a noticeable difference that play that play, that players and teams tend to alter depending on like what their the scoreboard looks like. And that's pretty much exactly what we saw in game four. Just that the, you know, Gale Force was so far behind, but then just one goal, how does that change your mentality? Do, all of a sudden, does it turn around and you're like, wait a second, all you do is score one more and we're one goal away from tying it. And I feel like that's what happened there. Uh, great question, Squirrel Dude. Thanks for that. Uh, keep sending your questions in. Use the Legendary. hashtag, use the hashtag <laughs> RLCS on Twitter. The more unique and awesome your name is, the better. Uh, anyway, let's carry on here. Uh, Excel is done for the day. However, Gale Force, they're going to be playing in a little bit. Uh, they're in match four once again against Method. But we're going to take a short break here from twitch.tv slash Rocket League. When we come back, it's your defending world champions. It's Envy going up against Team Secret. Stay tuned. 